Ladies and gentlemen, the coffins of five Gadwali soldiers who were killed in Jammu yesterday have come home to their families. This is a moment of grief. And as we look at those pictures and as we speak, there's a, another counter-terror operation that is currently underway in Jammu. This one is in Doda. This is the eighth terror operation in Jammu in the last one month, a pattern which has become a worry for India's security establishment. After all, terrorism in Jammu and Kashmir was mostly a Kashmir headache. In the last 24 hours, there is a stronger realization that things have changed. The attack in Katwa has come in an area that has been peaceful for the last 18 years. In the mid-90s, early 2000s, Katwa used to be a hotbed for militancy, but in the last 20 years, we haven't seen anything yet. Yesterday, Garhwal rifle troops were passing by a village called Bandota. It is 150 kilometers away from Katwa town and it borders Himachal. This is an area with a largely Hindu and Sikh population. As the truck passed this village, firing began from atop a mountain. There was return fire as well from the troops. But by then, two things had happened. Five soldiers had been killed and five had been critically injured. The terrorists, most possibly from Pakistan, we do not know how many, had hit and run once again. Again, something that is a change in tactic. The attack came on a day when Prime Minister Modi had just landed in Moscow. The last deadly attack in Jammu was exactly a month ago in Riyasi on the day the Prime Minister had taken oath for the third time. Look at the timing. This is when nine pilgrims were killed after their bus was hijacked. The blame game can go on. But what is clear is that there was a complete failure of intelligence when no one, not the IB, not the military intelligence, and certainly not the local police, no one had a clue that terrorists were lurking around in these areas, either in Riyasi or in Katwa. The very fact that they sneaked in and managed to run off means they had some local support. Yes, of course you can argue, why was the army vehicle in Katwa not bulletproof? Have we not learnt any lessons from Pulwama? But ladies and gentlemen, fact is, this was not an active counter-insurgency area. So counter-insurgency SOPs were simply not followed. And let's face it, the budget of the Indian Army is not the budget of the American Armed Forces where every vehicle can be bulletproof. That's the reality. I'm welcoming my guest, Lieutenant General D.S. Huda, someone who understands uh, how the military operates in Jammu and Kashmir and someone who understands more importantly the entire region. Uh, welcoming him to the show, General Huda, good evening. Good to have you on the show. Uh, could you help us understand why we are seeing a spike in violence in Jammu. After all, as I said, militancy and terror strikes were something that were common in Kashmir, but not in Jammu. What has changed? So, Shreya, I think it's a, it's a deliberate effort uh, by, by Pakistan uh, to stoke up insurgency and terrorism in an area that had, as you mentioned yourself, has been quiet for, for decades. Uh, there is enormous pressure in, in Kashmir uh, we just saw, uh, you know, two days back an encounter in Gulgaon district where six terrorists were killed. Uh, if you look at the comparison between terrorist incidents in Jammu and Kashmir, you will find that in the Kashmir region they are lesser than what is happening in Jammu. Uh, so I think there is a mm -hmm. there is a attempt to geographically spread terrorism into areas which were which were quiet. Uh, and the idea, of course, is to uh, two things. You know, one to sort of expand the scope of where security forces are are meant to operate, and second, I think more importantly, uh, is to sort of spread the narrative uh, and say, look, what the government has been saying about peace and security in Jammu and Kashmir uh, is actually false. We are here, and we can strike. Uh, to me, you know, the second part, uh, which is an attempt to subvert the government narrative is, is, is more important. 
General Huda, while that may be the case, and it's very clear that is the case given the timing of these attacks, whether it was Riyasi and or whether it was Katwa, the fact also is, uh, does does Jammu become easy hunting ground for the terrorists? I'm asking you this. We'll come to you know we'll come to the intelligence part, etc. Uh, but fact also is that while Kashmir has a very heavy concentration of boots on the ground in Jammu. Uh, troops have thinned out. Troops have been pulled out from Jammu and sent to the China border, sent to the LAC. Have we made it easier for them? Uh, so, Shreya, I mean, uh, to be fair, at the time when the decision was taken to uh, pull out troops from, uh, for example, Riyasi in 2020 was when we were actually facing a major threat from, from China. Uh, and the area was quiet. The area mm. had been quiet for almost 10 years. So when you looked at where is it that you can pull out uh, troops from, I mean, there isn't an indefinite supply of uh, soldiers uh, with, the, with the Indian Army. Uh, and as you know, uh, two years when recruitment did not happen during, uh, during the corona time, the numbers have also sort of uh, come down. So I think it was a fair decision taken at that time. Yes, the terrorists have taken advantage of it, by establishing sort of bases in areas where some thinning out had happened. Uh, they've taken advantage of uh, areas like Bani Macheri in the Katwa district where the latest incident have happened. And you yourself mentioned for 18 years, nothing, nothing had happened in this region. Uh, these, are, these are challenges that I think the Indian Army will have to look at, the government will have to look at. Uh, how is it that we can sort of quickly check this spread of terrorism into, into the Jammu region. Uh, it will temporarily require us to put in additional troops. I think what also happened, Shreya, is that, uh, you know, over a period of time when there is no activity, there is peace in a particular area, uh, standard operating procedures tend to become weak. Uh, human intelligence is not developed to the extent that it should. Uh, these are now the new challenges that the Indian Army will have to face with. But is that, has that been a failure, both in Riyasi and in Katwa? The fact is, General Huda, you have the IB that is working on the ground. You have the military intelligence that is working on the ground. And then the lo local police has their own intelligence. You have human intelligence. You have technical intelligence. Aisa kaise that, you know, three, four, five terrorists sneak into the area, an area that is, uh, that is dominated by Hindus and Sikhs. Uh, they come in. They do what they need to do and they run off as easily as they come in. So, Shreya, let, uh, let, me, let me tell you this, that uh, we knew there was intelligence that terrorists have sneaked into the Katwa area. Uh, they have infiltrated into Katwa, Katwa area. That, was, mm. that has been known for, for some time now. If you geographically look northwards from the Katwa border, the first area that comes is, uh, is Bani Macheri, where this, where this attack has taken place. Mm. Uh, thereafter, you get into uh, Madarwa and then you get into Doda. These are areas where encounters have been taking place. I think what happens is that, uh, you know, where is your intelligence effort concentrated? And it's obviously concentrated in areas where you think there is terrorist activity. So we could say that there is some, some level of intelligence failure. But I'm not sure the intelligence assets of the IB or the army or the police for that matter would have really been focused around, around the areas of Bani Macheri as much as they are focused around, say, mm -hmm. uh, Punch Rajori, uh, Kulgam, South Kashmir, North Kashmir. Uh, this, is a, this is certainly a lesson for us and then we need to see uh, what has to be done. I'm not sure we are also developing human intelligence in these areas, which we should be doing doing much more. But I wouldn't really be, uh, you know, very very critical of the intelligence agencies. I mean, they also have resources, and where and how mm. to deploy them uh, is is an issue. Okay, and now now it's clear with what has been happening in Jammu in the last one month that more resources will have to be deployed in Jammu. Uh, Lieutenant General D.S. Huda, thank you very much for joining us. It's always good to get your perspective. Thanks, sir, for joining us. Pleasure, pleasure. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce my guest to you this evening, Abhijit.
uh, Jasrotia is spokesperson of the BJP joining us. Ikram Sandhu is spokesperson of the Congress Party joining us. Advocate Neolfar Masood is leader of the National Conference. And, uh, and Lieutenant General Sanjay Kulkarni is, uh, is a defense expert. He's joining us on the broadcast as well. Uh, Advocate Masood, I'm coming to you first. Uh, is it fair, really, to blame the BJP for what is happening and blame the Modi government for what is happening, given that, uh, that, that militancy in Jammu and Kashmir has thrived and spread uh, across rules of all parties, including yours. I think it is fair enough that uh, BJP needs to take the responsibility for the situation which has arisen after the abrogation of the Article 370. Because, you know, we were told uh, on the floor of the parliament that once uh, article is abrogated, situations will be fine, we won't have any militancy here. But... If we'll see pre and, pa, pre and post uh, data uh, after abrogation, you could very really well see that the hot belt, which used to be in the early 90s and 2000, now the militancy has switched from, Jum from Kashmir region to Jammu region. Somebody has to take the responsibility, especially the hmm. people who are at Helm of Affairs. And once BJP is at Helm of Affairs, they need to, uh, we need to question hmm. them and they need to answer what actually is happening. On one side, the security cover of the people who are living in the Jammu Kashmir of 57 politicians that is being taken over, or uh, short, they are being shortlisted that their security cover will be downgraded. Once that is done on one side, and on, a, on the other side, we are seeing rise in the militancy. Now the Jammu area, especially this Katwa, be it Riyasi, be it uh, Rajori, these have become mm -hmm. the hotbed for uh, for the rise of, uh, we see the number Correct. of uh, incidents which are rising day by day, and we are seeing that people are being targeted. Army people mm -hmm. are being targeted. Pilgrims are being targeted. Okay. In the past, you could, find, you could never find that the pilgrims have been ever attacked in Jammu and, whole Jammu and Kashmir. So once they mm -hmm. are at Helm of Affairs, they need to say that, yes, we have failed to give you the good governance. Good governance includes the law and order itself, mm -hmm. ma'am. Yes. Okay, okay. Abhijit Chasrotia, your spokesperson of the BJP, has the government got it wrong in Kashmir? Abhijit, can you hear me? This question was for you. Okay, we'll try and go to Abhijit. I wonder whether he can hear me or not. He clearly can't because that is uh, that is what he seems to be telling our PCR. So we'll quickly try and fix uh, fix the audio to him. Ikram Sandhu, uh, again, as I say, uh, you know, something like terrorism needs to be beyond politics. That's something like a terror attack where nine pilgrims are killed or five Indian soldiers are killed. These are, these are situations that should not be politicized. Ask for accountability, but is blaming the government the right thing to do at this point of time, uh, given the fact that the Congress doesn't have its hands very clean as far as Kashmir is concerned either? Ashraya, is that for me? Yes, Ikram, that was for you. Go ahead, uh, is please. that for me? Yes, Ikram, it is for you. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. Good evening to all. No, not really. We are not indulging in a blame game here. And as far as national security is concerned, that is the last thing which is on either our mind or on the mind of our party. So that thing is very clear that as far as anything which, uh, you know, which has a direct bearing on national security, there is no politics to be played. The whole politics that have been played here, and I have a quib that I'll have to, uh, you know, or talk about here is on BJP. BJP kind of in its narrative that once 370 has been abrogated, everything is hunky-dory in the valley, everything is hunky-dory in JNK, actually took the eye off the target. They thought that they have done the abrogation and now everything else will just fall into place. Things don't fall into place like that. It's a very naive thinking that the BJP had that just because they have taken one action, that one action will take care of and paper over all the problems that you have. And today, five years since uh, every uh, article uh, has been abrogated, where are we? Areas which for the last 20 years were very peaceful and you really didn't have any terrorist activities are today feeling the brunt of it. In the last three years, we have had more than 60 
uh, you know, terrorist attacks in Jammu region, and 43 soldiers have been martyred only in Jammu region in the last three years. So this is something which, you know, for somebody hmm. like me personally, who comes from a, fa a family of army background, four generations in the army, it is something that really saddens me. And it saddens everybody that the government okay. of the day has taken its eye off the target. And because of that, we are suffering today the way we are suffering. Hmm. Okay, uh, just let me know if Abhijit uh, just wrote has patched. Meanwhile, I'm getting in General Kulkarni into the broadcast as well. Gen General Kulkarni, uh, look, some people will agree with the abrogation of Article 370 in, in Jammu and Kashmir and other people will disagree. But what is done is done. My point to you is that there has been much attempt by the government of India to portray, uh, portray a Naya Kashmir, to say that things have changed in Jammu and Kashmir. Things have changed, but it seems what has changed is that terrorism that once thrived in Kashmir is now moving towards the Jammu region. Uh, Shreya, the uh, fact is the abrogation of Article 370 ought to be celebrated by one and all if everybody considers Jammu and Kashmir as part mm. of India, irrespective of the religion that they mm. have, number one. Number two is the, mm. the complete thing the, to fight terror, which is emanating from Pakistan. It is the responsibility of every mm. individual of JNK to fight against it. Mm. It cannot be outsourced entirely mm. and be able to just enjoy the privileges and perks and the infrastructure and all of it that is coming up mm. and then blame governments or blame the security mm. forces, blame in agencies, and blame everybody else. Mm. However, until and unless we decide, mm. we know for sure if the people of the state, mm. or the, uh, the people of the state, seem to feel that something wrong has been done, and that wrong is the abrogation of Article 370, let's mm. put it that way. Why is it now coming? It's abrogated. You're right. Mm. It's abrogated. It's gone and ever. Everybody must. Fight terrorism. Terrorism does not see any religion. We mm. are fighting terror which is emanating from our neighbor. And why is there that terrain and also mm. logistic support is coming? Terrain you cannot change, but the logistic support which is emanating from the people of that state is there. And that is why they are there. How can I, I can't go and fight in Karachi, can I? But can General Kulkarni. And start fighting without knowing that uh, uh, terrain there and without somebody supporting you over there. The very fact that these people are coming, irrespective, I, I don't, I, since I've fought, I've been there, I was sir, commanding Kulkarni. officer in Doda for three years, so I know what it you, means. We could eradicate correct. Shreya, your entire My, my, thing my, limited, point is, my limited point is, my limited point, General Kulkarni, I'm just cutting you in here is the fact, no, my limited point here, General Kulkarni, is the fact, and you've, you, you've, uh, you've been a commanding officer in Doda, is the fact that you're saying that there has to be local support. Yes, there has to be local support, but please remember in Katwa, where this, uh, you know, where this latest terror strike has happened, it's a region that is dominated by Sikhs and Hindus. It, Shreya, it doesn't matter whether they're Sikhs or Hindus. It really doesn't matter whether they're Muslims over there. The fact is, anybody who is there, until mm. unless we have our eyes, we have human intelligence, there are people. Uh, of course, Doda has a population which is 55-45. Riyasi has a population which is 50-50. Katua may be having a population which is, say, 80-20. It doesn't really mean, even if there are two people, mm. even if they are not known, you mean to say the civil police does not know what's going on there? Or we don't know what's going on there? When we know that these things mm. are there, until and unless in Riyasi, what's the population? Mm. You see this terrain there, you see this past population, you see the demographic uh, population over there, how they're all spread. You know what's happening. You know how kind Sir. of false propaganda being spread, that Gujars and Bakrawal reservations have been taken away and it's been given to the parties over there. It is nothing like that. Until unless... But like sir, see, uh, by saying that, are we being in denial? Like General Kulkarni, by saying that, are we being in denial? The no, good spokesperson of the Congress we, Party we, has just put out a number that in Jammu, that in Jammu, in the last three years, 43 Indian soldiers have laid down their lives in the line of duty. We are being yes. in denial now if we blame everyone else, but we don't see what we are doing wrong. See, see, the focus has been so much on Kashmir that the eye has been taken off from Jammu. No, introspection is a must. 
there is no denying the fact. The fact is, blaming anybody else, we must first look into mm -hmm. ourselves as to where there have been gaps, why this kind of a thing has happened, who are those people who are providing information, why okay. are they not being hit, and why not we get strong, uh, really hit strong against all these people okay. who provide, whether they are o OGWs, or they are sleeper cells over there, all the kind of things that are coming, whether it is drugs, whether it is money laundering, whether it is weapons, whether it is ammunition, weapons flowing from, coming from Afghanistan into Pakistan and Pakistan from to ISI into India, all that. We really need to do this introspection is definitely required. That is why we all are there. That is why the borders are there. That is why we are ensuring that we see. But yes, these things are happening. The very fact that it is happening to say that, well, but the public itself, my one single point is terrorism can only survive and thrive if the people there are wanting to support it. If the people decide, irrespective whether they're from Jammu or from Kashmir Valley, if they decide there is no question the terror will be there. How, how is it possible? Who they have to they have okay. to live. The jungles over there do not provide. I, I understand the point out. you're making. I, I understand the point you're making, and in this case as well, in the Kathua case as well, uh, there is every indication, security forces are telling us, that there was some sort of support that these four, three, two terrorists had uh, from someone locally. Because you need food, you need a place to hide, and then when you're slipping away uh, after doing what you have done, you need more place to hide. So there's clearly support. My point, my limited point is that the graph of violence in Jammu has been going up for, for the last one year. Have we, have, we, have we lived in denial till Riyasi happened, till Kathua happened? Abhijit Jasrotia, spokesperson of the BJP, the fact is that parties in Kashmir are saying that the BJP has to take responsibility. They said that Article 370 will come to Jammu Kashmir. Mein. All terrorism will be wiped off the face of Jammu and Kashmir. That has not happened. What has merely happened is that Kashmir, mein, terrorism and counter -terror, terror ops have gone down. But the spike is now in Jammu. Uh, yes, yeah. First of all, I will pay, pay my homage to the five uh, martyrs who have laid down their lives for us, and I can very well feel the pain of their families also. But these are simple words, and I think more than that, you can. The real uh, sufferers are those families who have lost their uh, uh, relatives. Uh, the uh, main thing which I would like to bring in the notice of everyone is, is the sort of. Uh, peace which is prevailing in Kashmir nowadays and uh, uh, the sort of events which took place in Kashmir like G20 and more than 2.5 crores of uh, uh, tourists over there. Now Pakistan which is uh, known for changing their modus of operandi. Previously they were uh, using that operation Topak. Now they have shifted uh, their uh, uh, focus to Kashmir, Jammu and talking about Jammu, so I'll talk about my Jammu province right from Lakhanpur up to Punch. This entire area of Jammu is having a border with uh, Pakistan. Now, Pakistan has to, uh, continuously may, uh, mm. makes on efforts uh, for infiltration and they make a number of efforts and they just only one single mistake from us and then these uh, terrorists are over there. Since I come from Katu and this place, let me tell you one thing. I'm a localite and I have worked for three years in this area. It's an area in between Bilawar and Bani and start, starts right mm. from Gudu Falal, which is with Jammu and the other part is Bandar, which is uh, um, uh, having a border with Himachal Pradesh. And this is a tough terrain, a really very tough terrain. Including mm, uh, those uh, mountains are there, including those uh, dense forests are there. Then even uh, there are a um, uh, few other nalas and uh, other things are there. And uh, simple hydros, these uh, um, uh, terrorists can always have a um, edge over the others. Moreover, when I talk about the local support, um, uh, there is no doubt about it. Uh, uh, road about 10 days back, I did a press conference in uh, Kathua, and that time I categorically said that there are certain black sheep which are available over here. And those black sheep are the real person who are um, uh, mm -hmm. helping these terrorists over there. Police is working on that. Security forces are working on that. But the unfortunate part is that we have got such a napak mulk that is known as Pakistan, uh, which unfortunately is our neighbor. Uh, mm. And if you we'll talk about the things, let me tell you one thing. Mm. Uh, if you we'll talk about Bharatiya Janta Party, we have already shown them in Balatok and ba Balakot and uh, Uri Sajjika's side what we can do. Now it's the right time to teach them a lesson and just wait for some days. Mm. They will be taught a lesson. Okay. You know, I, I, I don't think we should put that kind of pressure on our forces. They know what to do. They know how and when to respond. So let's not put that kind of pressure on our forces uh, by this sort of commentary. But the fact is... Uh, that there is a worrying trend in Jammu and Kashmir. Kashmir that used to be the hotbed of militancy, where we heard all the headlines come out from, where we, we, where we constantly reported on anti-terror operations. We are not getting 
that news from Kashmir. Now, instead, we are getting that news from Jammu, and that is a big worry. Ladies and gentlemen, as I end the show, let me tell you, there is another counter-terror op that is currently underway in the Jammu region, the eighth in 31 days. As we wrap this show, a big salute to the five men who have laid down their lives in the line of duty in Katwa. All of them were from Garhwal. Their bodies, wrapped in the tricolor, have reached their homes. It's their families, ultimately, that will have to live with this vacuum for the rest of their lives. We leave it there for the moment, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Abhijit Jasrotia, thank you. Ikram Sandhu, thank you. Advocate Neolfar Masood, thank you. And General Kulkarni, always good to have you on the show. Ladies and gentlemen, with that, it's a wrap from me. Thanks for watching.